The future of humanity lies in the skies, beyond the clouds, and in the great unknown of the cosmos in which our little blue planet dwells. We have spent the past several decades studying that which we do not know, and have made extraordinary achievements for the human race, such as our ability to travel to our moon and have achieved a myriad of discoveries and successes since then. Now, scientists' sights are set on further outliers of our solar system and galaxy in the hopes we can become more acquainted with our cosmic home. So today, here at Unexplained Mysteries, we'll be taking a look at three scientific discoveries using telescopic technology. Scientists sent a huge underwater space telescope into Lake Baikal. In southern Siberia lies a freezing lake by the name of Lake Baikal. Russian, Czech, Polish, Slovakian and German scientists collaborated, developing and sending a colossal specialized telescope into its icy chasms in hopes of searching for rare and unusual particles, including the universe's most tiny elusive particle, neutrinos. The telescope in question is the Baikal GVD and was created with searching for neutrinos in mind. Neutrinos themselves are tiny particles that are subatomic and almost have no mass at all. They are not electrically charged. Neutrinos can technically be found anywhere, not necessarily exclusively at the bottom of mystic Siberian lakes. However, their immensely small size makes it extremely difficult to detect them under normal circumstances. Lake Baikal is 1,700 meters deep and is presently known to be the Earth's deepest body of landlocked water. Lake Baikal is full of fresh water, covered by a sheet of ice which will help keep out any solar or cosmic interference with the neutrino detectors, which are commonly built underneath the ground in order to avoid said interference. As such, Lake Baikal can be a location of scientific note when it comes to researching and finding these tiny particles. The neutrino detectors were drilled through the ice four kilometers away from the shore of Lake Baikal, and the scientists proceeded to place the components of Baikal GVD 1310 meters into the freezing icy lake. Glass spheres were attached to the telescope. These glass spheres are photomultiplier tubes that can see the specific spectrum of light produced when a neutrino is in the lake water. This device is dubbed the Cherenkov light after Pavel Cherenkov, a Soviet physicist. Baikal GVD is a truly huge telescope, the second largest neutrino detector ever created. The first is the IceCube South Pole Neutrino Observatory, searching for neutrinos in Antarctica. The IceCube detects roughly 275 neutrinos a day in the atmosphere. Someday, the scientists involved hope to expand the size of Baikal GVD. Among the scientists was Dmitry Naumov and Bear Shaboynov, both of the Joint Institute for Nuclear Research. Shaboynov stated about the lake, Of course, Lake Baikal is the only lake where you can deploy a neutrino telescope because of its depth. Fresh water is also important, water clarity too, and the fact that there is ice cover for two to two and a half months is also very important. There is a radio telescope on the far side of the moon. As we expand into space, thoughts of moon colonization often flow into people's minds. And indeed, various organizations have made attempts at establishing a human presence on the moon. In December 2018, the Chinese Lunar Exploration Program sent a mission lander U-22, otherwise known as Jade Rabbit 2, onto the moon, making the rover the very first to land successfully on the dark side of our moon. The same mission, the fourth part of the Chinese Lunar Exploration Program's Chang'e 4 mission, was the first robotic spacecraft to plant and sow seeds on the moon. The NCLE, known as Netherlands China Low Frequency Explorer, orbited the moon and was designated to catch radio frequencies between 80 kHz and 80 MHz. As the name suggests, the project is a collaboration between the Netherlands and China, specifically China's National Space Agency and the Netherlands Institute for Radio Astronomy. Astron has been working on radio astronomy for decades now and is responsible for the WSRT, or the Westerbork Synthesis Radio Telescope and the EVN, 
European Very Long Baseline Interferometry Network. The NCLE allows China and the Netherlands to observe radio astronomy occurring by the dark side of the moon, which is believed to be ideal as it is far removed from human interference. The radio telescope is going to capture emissions from the 21cm emissions range, places in space that we believe are linked to past periods in the universe's history, such as the elusive Cosmic Dawn, a cosmic era previously unknown to us. Using the telescope, there is a chance we could examine the light that could help us understand a plethora of things about the universe, such as the logistics behind dark matter and when the first stars were created, or how the galaxies formed. The director of Radbu Radio Lab, Dr. Mark Klein Watt, officially stated, Our contribution to the Chinese Chang'e mission has now increased tremendously. We have the opportunity to perform our observations during the 14-day-long night behind the moon, which is much longer than was originally the idea. Three years of hard work are finally paying off for both Dutch and Chinese scientists as they unfurl the telescope's antennas and begin this new era of cosmic science for us. Scientists of all nations worldwide are eagerly awaiting the emissions the NCLE will capture during its run. Heino Falk of the Radboud University, professor of astrophysics and radio astronomy said, we are finally in business and have a radio astronomy instrument of Dutch origin in space. The team has worked incredibly hard, and the first data will reveal how well the instrument truly performs. Evidently, the NCLE is a national pride of both the Netherlands and China. The antennas were supposed to be released far sooner than they were, but due to a large amount of data suggesting they would deteriorate and break, researchers made the executive decision to gather more information before proceeding. Currently, the antennas are picking up cosmic intel from an estimated 13 billion years before our time, when the universe was still in its infancy. They are still unfurling at a slow, steady rate, and once they completely unfold, we are sure to discover signals that were emitted from the Big Bang itself. As such, we will know an immeasurable amount of information about us, where we come from, and about the center of existence. South Africa's Meerkat radio telescope just discovered 1,300 galaxies. The South African Meerkat radio telescope is a true work of wonder. Utilizing a mere quarter of its possible power, it managed to discover a shocking 1,300 brand new galaxies in a spot where a mere handful of 70 were officially verified prior to this discovery. The Meerkat has 16 satellite dishes which, using its 64 receptors, is expected to someday soon become the most powerful radio telescope on Earth. The Meerkat's chief scientist, Dr. Fernando Camillo, stated they are far better than we could have expected. This means that this telescope, as is today only one quarter of the way to its full contingent, is already the best radio telescope in the Southern Hemisphere. This means great things for the future of galactic discoveries, especially since throughout this decade, the SCAR have made plans of placing 3,000 dishes across an entire square kilometre in various countries to give researchers even more amazing images of outer space. The potential for discovery brought about by this is immense. Some scientists estimate that the potential of what we could find will be raised by upwards of 10,000 times that of which we know now. Black holes, dark matter, energy, supernovas, galaxies – we might be able to, for the first time, gain a full vision of what our universe is composed of and what it is like up close, and maybe even uncover more about its origins tens of billions of years ago. The Meerkat's isolated location in South Africa's Karoo region allows for the best conditions to search the stars, without much light pollution. Another radio telescope connected to the Meerkat is planned on being built in Australia sometime within the coming decade. Nanedi Pandor, the South African Minister of Science and Technology, stated, This is the first time that an African group of countries will host global science infrastructure of this character. It's a first for us as Africa, and also it's a first for the world because the world hasn't done this in Africa. We are building a global infrastructure for the world. Furthermore, Pandor announced his belief that theirs would be the greatest telescope in the world. More than 20 countries are participating in the creation of the dishes. 
SCAR managed to raise and invest $205 million into their telescope research and development, most of which has been primarily funded by the curious public and fellow scientists who wish to see the project flourish and thrive. But what do you make of these recent discoveries? Be sure to let us know your thoughts in the comments section below and help us by growing this community while working to solve these unexplained mysteries. Thank you for watching and don't forget to subscribe for more videos.